Welcome to Good Morning Joy, brought to you by our friends over at Brave Healer Productions, waking the world up to what's possible for healing, one brave word at a time. I'm Sherry Elise, your host, and I am so excited that you are joining me today. If this is your first time, I hope that you've got those cheek muscles ready because we've got some smiles, we've got some laughter, and we've got a whole lot of inspiration today. Coming up on today's show, I have got the founder and visionary behind the Imperfectly Perfect campaign, Glenn Marsden, as well as I've got actor, singer, you might know him from Baywatch, breath practitioner, Jeremy Jackson. And then a little later on The Joy Report, I am taking you 30,000 feet up in the sky to share with you a kind act that has left everybody on cloud nine. We have a great show for you today, so don't go anywhere. So for those of you who have followed me for some time, then you know that I am very open about wearing wigs. I am also very open about having experienced hair loss. And the reason why I'm sharing this is because it took me a very, very long time to come clean about it. And I suffered with so much unnecessary anxiety and fear, worrying about what other people were gonna think about me. And once I finally came clean about the secret, what I found was that in sharing my perceived imperfections, I not only set myself free, but I also set all of the people free that were listening to that message. And so I just want to say that if there is something that you are struggling with today, that you are worried about somebody accepting or judging you, the people that love you will love and accept all of you. And the ones that don't, they don't deserve you anyway. So now it's time to share with you the good news you should know about on The Joy Report. In a heartwarming story high above the clouds, a passenger on a flight from New York to London gave the slogan, flying the friendly skies, a whole new meaning. Jack Littlejohn made headlines after he performed an act of kindness so touching and inspiring that flight attendant from Virgin Atlantic, Leah Amy said that she has now officially met her two favorite passengers ever, Jack and Violet. Jack struck up a conversation with Violet in the economy section when he found out that he had been upgraded by his mom to business class, knowing that he didn't really need it and there would be somebody out there that would appreciate it more he found Violet and found out from her that it had always been her dream to sit in the front of the airplane. Well, Jack swapped seats with her and Violet couldn't be happier. Leah Amy said that Violet was so giddy and excited to be sitting in business class that she asked to have a selfie to prove it to her daughter. She got all tucked in right after supper. Meanwhile, Jack was over in economy, sitting right next to the toilets, and the flight attendant said that he didn't ask for a thing and didn't make a peek the entire flight. This is just one of those stories that reminds you that with kind people and kind acts, anybody's dream can come true at any place and at any age. Joining me now, I have the visionary and founder behind the global movement in Perfectly Perfect campaign. Glenn Marsden is here along with the ambassador of the globally Imperfectly Perfect campaign, singer, actor, transformational breathwork practitioner, and you might know him from the series Baywatch. I've got Jeremy Jackson here. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks, Thank it's great to be here. I'm so excited to have you both here. <laughs> you have just released this book, the Imperfectly Perfect Campaign. And I gotta tell you, as I read through these stories, what I found in it was a love story to self-love, a love story for vulnerability. Um, and I just wanna say, because it's not often talked about, that the two of you and any man that wrote in this that shows up this courageously and vulnerable, it's not easy. Um, so I just wanna give you kudos to doing that. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. So I'll start with you, Glenn, as the vision behind this. I know. <laughs> Deep breaths. <laughs> oh, you could do a section for us. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Uh, I'm curious for you. Um, where did this stem from? What, what what birthed this big movement? It actually came from adversity. 
I went through myself. I went through body dysmorphia, something that I openly speak about. As you say, the masculinity, I often hid it. Social media was a big attributor for me. And turning social media back on, I found that an old friend from the UK had sadly passed away. There was no story behind it until I found out that he'd sadly taken his life. Now, seeing he had a child, I had a child, and just knowing for one split second that his wife would have had to sit that child down and say, dad's not coming home, broke my heart, as you can imagine. So I reached out to a lot of organizations, wanting to give back, wanting to help, got told thank you, but no thank you, understandably, a lot of advocates. So being from Yorkshire, rolled my sleeves up and said, right, this is what I'm gonna do. And initially I just started taking photos of celebrities. I didn't know anybody, I didn't have any background in campaigns, PR, marketing, anything. Left my career in fitness, jumped in construction as a laborer, 12 hours a day, six days a week, learning it all. And chance meeting with Mr. Jeremy Jackson, who helped me bring it to America. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, I just, you just stepping forward and sharing your story and seeing the importance um, in other people sharing their story, what has that on a personal level done for you? It's incredible. I mean, being in the fitness industry myself and then talking about body dysmorphia very openly, guys don't do it. I mean, it's something me and Jeremy have spoken about from back in his day with Baywatch. And, until I openly spoke about it, those conversations weren't being had. And especially with males, it's so dominated by a lot of females talking about body issues, self-care, self-love, which is incredible, but we don't often see men. So I wanted to dismantle this ideology that men have to be tough, masculinity. And still to this day, there's been people from the older generation saying, I'd still never talk about it. I was like, that's the problem. Why are we not talking about it? Because you've got a wife, somebody's got a husband, they've got a child. Would you want to carry that legacy on and see people take their life? And it's been an incredible response and it's what, five years now, 12 million people it's touched the life of and events, summits, book series. It's, it's amazing. It's, I, I love that you not only share that, like you share so, like I keep saying vulnerable because that's that's what I'm feeling from this. And as we know, vulnerability strengthens people. It actually gives people permission to show up imperfectly and to just show up as they are. Jeremy, you've been doing that for a while now though. <laughs> you've been sharing your story, you know, your journey, uh, reality TV, right? Um, being very open and helping people in your way. Can you talk a little bit about why you decided to not only join this campaign, but what was important for you to start sharing so openly about what you've been through? Yeah. Um, you know, originally when Glenn hit me up to do a photo shoot, um, honestly, I hate photo shoots. You know, I'm all cozy in Orange County, far away from the <laughs> entertainment industry, yeah. and I can just be hairy and unkept and, you know, whatever, you know, and, Oh, for sure. Me oh, too. That's, that's outfits. <laughs> it's outfits. It's gas. It's driving. It's time. It's Botox. It's uh, trying. You know. Uh, it's uh, you know bronzer. Or I got to go to a tanning bed. I was like, oh my gosh, my week is already full with thinking. You know. So this is why I avoid photo shoots. Uh -huh. You know. Uh, but honestly, there was something about Glenn and um, his authenticity, and just how he approached me, and I was like. I kind of want to know this guy. Like, it's less about the photo shoot and like, I want to be friends with this guy. And when I showed up for the photo shoot, thank goodness I did, you know, because he did something very, very different. Rather than wanting me to look my best or to create this picture perfect thing, he wanted me to go into a state and imagine one of the worst times of my life. Mm. And to, to relive that and to bring that pain to the forefront of my face and my aura and my energy. And that was the picture that he wanted. And, uh, that, it was it was beautiful, and we just hit it off from there. We, you know, one of the first things that got us started was, uh, you know, we're only as sick as our secrets. Mm. You know, it's an adage a lot of people have heard, and um, you know, it, it, it gets taken surface surface level. But being as sick as our secrets, and the ability to share and to break the stigma, which is uh, what the imperfectly perfect campaign is all about, and uh, showing our scars so that other people can heal. Another way of saying that, you know. And so when we connected on that level, guys both never ripped enough, never jacked enough. Looking down and seeing your boyhood arm while other people are like, "Dude, you're in great shape." You're like, "What are you talking about? Yeah. This thing hasn't changed." <laughs> it's a it's a major perception problem. Yeah. And if we're out here living life with a 
an ill disease perspective, if I can't see the reality of what's going on, I'm, I'm probably in for some trouble. I'm probably living in a delusion and I'm probably gonna hurt myself and other people. And, and um, as we overcome ours and as we share those secrets, we get a little less sick and the, the less sick we get, the more we're able to connect, right? And, and the, the lack of separation, bringing people more and more together is where the real juice is. It's where the real power is. So we've been doing that for five years and it's been, a, it's been an honor. I, I love it. I love your chapter uh, called Soul Warrior. Can you share <laughs> with us um, what a soul warrior is? So, you know, I had never written um, a chapter for a book and, mm. you know, it just kind of developed as I was uh, really taking a personal interest in creating the story. And, and Soul Warrior is just something that kind of emerged through these disciplines and through these um, these non-negotiable ways of living and, and kind of keeping your eye on the prize and being willing, you know, willingness, honesty, open-mindedness. Uh, I love this statement, who am I? Willing, honest, open-minded, who am I? W-H-O, right? Um, love that. And, and being somebody who's willing to do the battle of life, even if you think you're gonna lose because it's a battle worth fighting and uh, being useful and effective in the lives of other people has been the thing that's really lifted me out of my own self-focus and self-centeredness and, and, and my own fear, my own worries and my own anxieties. Um, being the person that's pulling other people out of the pit has been the thing that's kept me from jumping back into it. And it's like, we're out and we are willing and ready to do whatever it takes to stay out. And it just so happens the best way to stay out is to help others get out. And it's kind of magic, man. It's, it's so powerful. I, I spoke to Glenn before the show and talked about how in sharing my truth, you know, my abuse as a young girl and in, in my hair loss that I talked about earlier on the show, that that openness, it, that sets ourselves free, but it also gives permission for other people to, to feel better about what it is that they're going through. What have you noticed? Um, what have you observed since you've been doing that? Do people come to you like her? You know what? I, I'm very outspoken about this because we see so many organizations around the world doing incredible things, doing so much research and there's so much money pumping into everything that they're doing, which is incredible. But the human element is missing. Like we've seen through the pandemic, we've turned to an epidemic when it comes to unprecedented proportions of mm -hmm. mental health. Mm -hmm. Yet there's so much research in terms of Here's a pamphlet, read that. Here's an internet site. And I know when I went through my struggles and I can't speak for anyone else, but the last thing you wanna do is get out of bed to read something. <laughs> the human element is a simple voice note, reaching out to your friends. Like everybody knows me that I send voice notes to everybody. You've got to know me the last yes. few days and you're like, this guy just sends voice notes. <laughs> but it's a sincerity and it, it is a heart to heart connection. Mm -hmm. And like I say, I don't wanna detract from what other people are doing, but the IPC has come in it hasn't had resources, it hasn't had funding, it hasn't had grants or anything like that. It's been a hard slog. But what it has done has touched the lives of 12 million people, got over 500 of the world's influential people from corporate entertainment, from the medical field, and it keeps growing. So as I've grown and I've grown in faith, I'll give it testimony to God, and I know Jeremy does, and if we can't speak on that to show that this has been divinely led, like you, you've got to think about it. There's, there's, there's likes of Jeremy, there's likes of some more Hollywood big names in prolific areas. And a guy reaches out to them who doesn't know anybody, has got no network, <laughs> nothing to give. And like Jeremy said, and I'm very grateful to hear it, the authenticity, because it's led from the heart. There's not anything to do with personal gain. In fact, if there was, I would have quit a long time ago because it's been a sacrifice. <laughs> and Jeremy knows he's been there with yeah. encouragement. And yeah. I love this guy to bits because he doesn't have to, and that shows him. And there's so many people on the external that portray judgment from a character or someone's past. And it's like, guys, we've all got a past. Like, can we not move on from that past? And that's what the book is about, bringing together celebrities as the media pertain them to call celebrities, everyday people, removing a profession or a title, because that's all it is. There's a mother, father, son, husband, wife, how are you gonna champion them if someone in your family's struggling? So what would you say for people that are struggling right now who, you know, 
are holding in a secret like you did, or holding in a secret that you did, and what gives you the courage or the strength to be able to share that? Because I know you went through silence for a long time, and you talked about your wife um, giving you basically that ultimatum. Um, yeah, what, yeah. I, it, it got to the point with body dysmorphia, and I was trying to hide it for so long, this masculine. Mm -hmm. I was teaching on stages to a couple of hundred people when it came to fitness, group fitness. On the external, I was extrovert. Everyone saw this bravado and that. I'd get home. I was looking in the mirror two to three minutes at a time, my worst two to three hours. People thought it was a sense of ego, narcissism. And from going through kind of body dysmorphia, you know it's not. But from a perception, again, what we look at in society, it's why is he looking at himself? Why is mm -hmm. he? And I'd disappear to bathrooms and I'd take my shirt off and see if anything had changed. And it really got to a detrimental part. And I've spoke to so many guys and they've said, oh my God, I resonate. Because I was trying to find someone that would agree with my flaw, just for the justification. And once they did to shut me up, that validated it. So it'd make me even worse. And it was the <laughs> point where we'd got Lincoln, my firstborn, um, there was an ultimatum and my wife, literally, it was the best thing she ever did for me. She was like, look, we can't carry on like this. I'm not seeing you, Lincoln's not seeing you, the bathroom mirror's seeing you more than <laughs> anything. And I can laugh back now, but it was a time when I burst into tears, didn't know what to do. And that was when she helped me seek help. Hmm. Yeah. Best thing ever. It's the, it's the self, right? The self obsession. And um, you know, the struggle you, you mentioned is, is very real because it is what we know. And what we know based on the past, relived in the future, in the present rather, means, you know, in essence, we're living in the past and today. And that means we're gonna take today, which is living in the past, into the future, and you get into this cycle, this self-harm yeah. cycle, you're stuck in the story, and um, and it's because it's what you know, and it's how you feel, and it's impossible not to believe what you feel so deeply, so you get stuck in this thing. And what it really is, it's called, um, it's called terminal uniqueness and the illusion of separation. And, and there's, the illusion means that I'm separate from or that I'm terminally unique, meaning it, this, this thing that sets me apart from everybody else is worse than anybody else feels. Only I feel mm -hmm. this. Uh, nobody has it in this way. But you know, the doctors gave me this diagnosis and don't you know my dad hit me here and then I didn't have this and I need that. And it's just, you're so enmeshed and immersed in the problem that it's impossible to access the solution. And you, you, you die a, a slow, painful death in that way, if not, physically, mentally, and emotionally. Yeah. And nobody can, can live like that. So the struggle that you mentioned, I, I've been telling people that the struggle is only real because you believe it to be real. It's what you know, and you have to raise your consciousness, you have to raise your awareness or expand your mind to the possibilities of a little bit different. Maybe you're not alone. Maybe you could have a life better than that you've experienced in the past. And that maybe provides more freedom than, than you can imagine. Well, the amazing thing that you both have done is that you've shared the story and you've given people a doorway to freedom for themselves to be able to experience and be okay with what they're going through. And this work is so powerful. I'm not done with you two yet. <laughs> um, we're gonna cut to commercial and we're gonna come back and have some fun and then I'll ask you some closing questions. Cool. Okay, so I thought that we would play this fun regional game, even though I know you're from England, which I recently learned after I went through Australia and Ireland. I just uh, I was Irish. <laughs> <laughs> and you're from Southern California, of course. And so I thought we would play this fun game where I'm gonna name some phrases and I want you each to guess from the opposite region if you know what it is. So I'm gonna give you some Aussie phrases. Okay. And you're gonna get some SoCal, okay? So I'll start right here with you, Jeremy. Do you know what, I'm not gonna try the accent, Chucking a sickie is. <laughs> no freaking clue. <laughs> Do you want to take a guess? Uh, throwing a fit. 
a temper tantrum. No, mm. uh, what is it? Mm. Basically, if you're throwing a sickie from work, you're yes. taking a day off. Oh, taking a day off. You're taking okay. a day off. All yeah, right. yeah, when you're not sick. really sick. Like, yeah. Okay. Jack okay. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Glenn. What does you came in clutch mean? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> when you came in clutch. When you came in close. In clutch. When you come in too in close. <laughs> no. What, do you know what it means? Yes. yes. Yeah. It means like at the perfect time, right. just uh, uh, pristinely slid in there in the in in a great way. So, so yeah, wow. someone needs like a pair of sunglasses. They're like, oh my god, my eyes hurt so much. Man, I got a, I got a, got sunglasses for you. Oh yeah, thanks for coming in clutch. I came in clutch. Coming yeah. in clutch. Yeah. All right, we're weird here in no, California. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So what about pulling a Swifty? Pulling a Swifty. And it's not about Taylor Swift. Okay. <laughs> pulling a Swifty. Uh, I'm going to say uh, pulling a, is like uh, uh, like cheating somebody, like doing something secretive. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right, right on. Like, just, just fast one over someone. All right. Well, right. Can you say it in your, Aust- your kind of Australian accent? Pull in a yeah, let's just say I'm from Yorkshire in England, but I've lived 17 <laughs> years in Australia, so people are going to be like, that accent is really old. I know. Old. I know. Pull, it's so fun to me. Pulling a Swifty. Pulling pull a fast one. I like pulled up YouTube, and I was trying to do these, and I was like, let's just not even try that, Sherry. Yeah. Okay. You'd have never got Yorkshire. You should have been Yorkshire. What about, okay, so what about scoop you up? Scoop you up. Is it kind of a dating thing? Pick you up? You're picking someone up? I'm scooping <laughs> yeah, you up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Similar, Checking yeah. you up, scooping well, you up? Well, picking them up, just come and give them a ride, basically. I'm going to scoop oh, you right. up. Yeah, I'll, I'll swing by and I'll scoop you up. Yeah, you okay. got it. We'll give it to them. We'll give it to them. Okay, yeah. What about this one for you? Having a yarn. That was terrible. Having accent. a yarn? Having a yarn. I know. Uh, a nap? No. no. Having a yarn is having a having a, a talk, good an, right? Good old chat. Oh, okay. Having a yarn, like I spinning the yarn, kind yeah, of like, like people uh, are just sitting having a talk. All right, let's do one last tea. one, and I just want to know if you know this. You guys from, got now, weird one. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I want to know Clutch. if you know this from being out here about. I'll take a double double animal style. Do you know what that is? <laughs> Is it to do with a drink? No, no you're it's you're a, <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a double I'll go into the bar and say I'll take a double double. <laughs> it sounds like but some animal style. Double? What is that? Animal style. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it could be, but by your laughs, it's something that I, I'm English, so it could be is it it's 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 in and out here. It's the it's, burger place. The burger place, yeah. yes. Uh, it's very okay. here. Double right. double animal no. style, protein style. That's what you want to go get. Right. right. Never, exactly. never, never, never. <laughs> all right. I mean, honestly, when I was like looking through all these, those were like, good ones. The, they're good. I've got some more. I've got ride shotgun. You know what ride shotgun is? Yeah, in the car. Uh, front seat. Front seat. Yeah. Uh, I didn't choose. I didn't choose that because I wasn't sure. It sounded that. similar. Yeah. Uh, you can cut the cameras. <laughs> we're just going to keep playing. Right? Yeah, I know. I don't. Uh, what about a sig alert? I don't have much more Australian ones. A sig alert. Do you know what a sig alert is? Sig alert. A sig alert. Sig alert. I'll give you a hint. Well, you hear it on the radio here. So, yeah. Sig alert. A sig alert. It means you're oh. just, it's traffic related. It means okay. you're looking at, yeah. Cause <laughs> Stop the traffic. Oh. Yeah, there, it's I'm always on. Right. It's always on. There's a An sig announcement? alert here. <laughs> <laughs> so I just have one last question before you guys No shrimp on the Barbie? No shrimp on the Barbie. I know. I was like, I have a shrimp on the Barbie. So one last question for you both before you leave, because this is Good Morning Joy. I would love to know from each of you, what is something that secretly, that a lot of people don't know about, secretly brings you joy? Just watching TV all by myself, no mm-hmm. interruptions. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, yeah. pure joy, yeah. zoning out. I think if I'm honest, my guilty pleasure would be joy watching the, um, you know, the late night YouTubes. Which the, kind? The, the shorts, <laughs> and you're watching pretty much like the America's Got Talent, uh-huh. and if anyone's got kids that can sing, turn to an emotional rush. Glenn, Jeremy, mm. I so appreciate you both being here today. Thank you for the incredible work that you're doing with this campaign of helping so many of us um, look at our adversities, be able to overcome them, and to be okay with them, to accept them. Tell us how they can get a hold of your book and follow this campaign. Yes, yeah, so you can go to imperfectlyperfectcampaign.org where you'll find all the details. You can find us across social media, and then you can see all the incredible people behind it. Follow them see their stories because they continue to tell their stories. So just just a big shout out. There's other 21 co-authors there, a lot of celebrities, a lot of everyday people just sharing. So big thank you for them for sharing their vulnerability as well. Absolutely. Thank you both. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. And now let's go talk to some peeps on the street on this week's If you had absolutely no fears at all, 
What risks would you take in your life that you haven't? I'd probably like skateboard and do like more X Games stuff. Skydive if I had no fears at all. Or like swim in the ocean. I'm really scared of open water. Like jump off a yacht, that seems cool. <laughs> I'll do that with you. If I had no fears, I'd probably commit to music if I had no fears. Will you be willing to share a little bit of it? Sometimes I wish you knew, but I disguise the truth. Think I'm happy, but I'm still stuck on us. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You just faced a fear. I did. And people are going to hear this, and then guess what that means? No, shoot. No, that means that you get to do your music even more. Yeah. That means you get to go after it because you just broke the ice right now. I did. I appreciate you for that because I would have never done it myself. Yeah. You think this is easy for me just sitting talking to strangers even though I'm choosing this? I'm choosing this because I know we're all connected. Mm -hmm. And I'm choosing this because I know we all have something to share and we all share like I have fears too. Okay. Thank you. Good morning, Joy. She's great. She's <laughs> Caleb, thank you so much for being part of Good Morning Joy and for giving us joy today with your song. Thank you. You gave me joy. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for joining us today. I can't wait to see you next time on Good Morning Joy, where every day starts with a smile.